Hello there folks, how are you? Uh, it's uh, Sean Marino here on behalf of BSM TV. I'm uh, down today as part of my 10-week uh, 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 stage that I'm doing. I'm going to be running uh, quite a few shows on local stars from the past. Now, what I call local stars from the past is uh, local footballers who have played in Ballymena Saturday Morning League, who uh, perhaps have played for Ballymena United, or if they were lucky enough to put as, as much dedication in as what they have as possible, is to go farther forward afield and uh, apply their expertise at a higher level. Uh, now, a lot of them, including football, including boxing, and including rugby, uh, there's a couple of cricket players there, so there's quite a lot for uh, the people out there to be involved in. And uh, today I have with me here, I have uh, Mr. Tom Sloan. I've been invited down into the splendid uh, house of Tom Sloan here in uh, the surroundings of Drum Tower in Bali. And uh, Tom, I want to just say thanks very much for making me very welcome and for making me a nice cup of tea there, and uh, obviously for uh, letting me into your house to conduct a small interview with you about your times of uh, playing soccer in the past and how much you enjoyed your soccer and of course your career at a pinnacle when you ran out for Manchester United against uh, quite a few teams yeah. in uh, the old first division which is now of course the Premiership but uh, no, I just want to say thanks very much for that and for making me welcome Tom. You're welcome sir. Sure. That's great. Welcome. Hey. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I have known Tom for quite a long time. I know that we're. I think everybody in Balamina is quite aware of who the Sloan brothers are. You know, uh, obviously they both of them played very well for Balamina in their times. And uh, John, they used to say about John, if Balamina, if John played, Balamina played. You know, and uh, I can say a lot about Tom. I know Tom quite uh, personally as a friend there, and we've obviously had plenty of uh, time for each other. Tom, I just want to start off uh, in your time there, obviously playing football when you were younger as a kid. Obviously, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you had played in the school cup finals and stuff like that there, and had major marks and stuff like that there. You were uh, Balamina boys, was it, Tom? Yeah, Balamina boys. Uh, and the boys. You just won the Akean Cup there at school, didn't you? I won it twice, Sean. Yeah. What did you because play? I played a year ahead. You played for a fourth year. <coughs> Do you remember the fourth year of the yeah, last year? Yeah, certainly, yeah. So yeah. I played, uh, when I was third year, I played the fourth year. And then the following year I played, and we won it again. So I, I won it twice. The other and, and Raymond won it once, and John won it once. So the three brothers won. But you have the two. You, you, you I, I, I don't know. Do you still have that on? Do you still have that on, John? I heard that Thomas say, oh, well, that's always nice. You know, obviously, I, I played in the cup final myself at school. We were, we were actually lucky enough to win that as well. And that's a, I must say, it's a great day. Where, where did you play your game at? We <coughs> played one at the showgrounds and one at Rutgers. I suppose it was great run down as a kid, wasn't it? You know, oh, at the oh, showgrounds. Oh, oh, from the old point of view, it was good. It was brilliant. Yeah. It was, that was Wembley, wasn't it? That was, or Wembley. You know, there's no doubt about it. The pits polished and all, you know. And if you had done nothing else that played showgrounds, you'd have been happy. Ah, you'd, uh, you'd have done it, that's right. Yeah. Then, you know, yeah. but, and hey, many a school kid these days would be very, very happy with the way it was all changed and the, the ground down, the new, oh, new, new, two new stands there, changed. new change rooms, you know. The facilities are first yeah, class. Yeah. Most of the facilities that the children are saying, you know. And Tom, I know you've got people here just to give me. You played for Harry Homers then, didn't you? It was actually the old Redmond the Homers, regular in fact. Homers. I still think of them, Sherman, as a regular Homers. Sometimes I get my names changed. I've got a wee bit. You're brought up to the regular Homers, it's a regular Homers. Uh, certainly, of course. Yeah. You played for them? I played I played when I was uh, 15, 16. Still at school, and I played for the Homers, along with the older players. Duxy Barr, Burley Blair. Duxy Barr, Burley, Burley Blair, yeah. Uh, and that's how you learn your trade. Uh, and then you were playing against older players, and then uh, physical ways they were bringing you. You had to learn. The young boys start up and you're, you're playing against the older boys that are bigger and they're knocking you about. You soon learn, don't you? You look after yourself. You know, you have nimble feet, Tom. You have yeah, to get out of the road. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't put your toe in, you had to get all the way in. Uh, you get hurt. And that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I could, there are many good players out there, guys, too. As I say, Bertie Blair, there's always a way to talk. You know, my dad would say, not Yeah, Bertie was uh, the football brain, and Bertie was. Uh, and the brother Nesser, Dr. Nesser, Raymond. Raymond, you know, Raymond of the Nellis when he was, you know, around the age, and that week in time, or he might have been the one that was across the world. You know? Certainly, Tom, right? Because he, he had the football brain, just you know, hadn't got it physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But I wasn't aware of that there, no. Mm -hmm. So then, obviously, having, having played for the Homers then, obviously, at the start of your uh, football career, you would say, in the Saturday morning league, mm -hmm. it was great to have. The Saturday morning is a great thing, isn't it? That's fantastic. fantastic. It's yeah. tremendous. And it's going from strength to strength. Well, it hasn't been. It's not all there. It has really has gone to the next level. People that thought, you know, that would have won. Well, well, years ago, one of the divisions. Nice. Oh, I certainly had some representatives. Then, then, maybe, is there too many divisions then? Well, I've argued this point, you know, oh, there are too really. many divisions. All the good players are spread out, whereas in the end days, Sherman, you had, what, maybe 12 teams? Right. So, so all the all the better players were playing football. <coughs> uh, and now, you know, there's fellas there playing third division, 
just for a game of football. Uh, certainly. There's not no harm. I was having as well here for it. I don't disrespect anybody, but that's, that's the way it is. I suppose everyone's been catered for too, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think we've all been back to agree, and there's no doubt about it. It's a fantastically run league, and yeah. it's great, you know, for it. It. I played that it myself, you know. And Obviously, I do these interviews for uh, the Bowling of the Saturday Morning Page, yeah. which I think is fantastic. You know, there's a hell of a lot of people. Uh, you're one of yourself, Tom, you're in there and you can contribute, you know, and I think it's great. You know, I, I, just, I just embark, obviously, from the Homers then. Had someone come and asked you to come up to the Showgrounds, Tom, what was the situation there? You'd obviously went to Bowling of the United then as yeah. a reserve player, what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I moved from uh, the Homers and then I played for the Strollers, the Paddy. Another kind of thing. Paddy Miller, I know Paddy well, passed away, 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 and, away and, the rest and then, yeah, and then uh, up into the reserves with Smudger Smith, who looked after John the Smith, oh, Smudger, played, played, played and learned a lot at that level, but uh, thought I wasn't getting anywhere, so I gave it up and, and was moving back to the morning league. Mm -hmm. And then Alec McKee came up and met me. I was up again a few times at the shop, and Alec met me and says, if I came back, we get on the first team. Well, that was my dream, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, so I obviously yeah. Yeah. So I says, okay, there's not really a lot more you could do. Yeah, and it says, I'll, 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 I'll take you up now, and I went back up. And sure, I was in the first team in a couple of weeks. Well, what was that like, Tom? Well, I run right in front of you. Run on the sky, blue on you. A team you'd support it, and, and you know, went and seen them play in finals and watched them every week. Well, you know, that was a dream come true. Oh. But a lot of them I know have gone there. Yeah, thanks, oh, certainly. Yeah. But, Tom, at the end of that season, you, 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 I'm aware that you played the Legacy Cup final, obviously. And the Legacy Cup final, yeah. We finished uh, second from bottom. Uh, we got and we're still in the Cup final. And we're in the Cup final. And we got reinstated. And we then played one in the league. Ballamy and I actually played in the Cup Winners Cup. Borwards, FC Borwards. I was actually at the game. Because Lampy, oh, some of the questions came from Lampy. Lampy took up the European Cup because they won the league. Mm. So that left the uh, runners up in the cup to play. Right, so right. FC Borwards, they played in yellow and blue. Right. So they did. I was or was it SK Bevern? I was in England, so I wasn't sure. Right. 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 It could be Bevern. Right. I'm not sure. It was either Bevern or Borwards. I must obviously. Yeah, Tom, I can weave up here and obviously you're aware of. You had then again a selection for the Northern Ireland Number 21. Yeah. Yeah, they had made yeah, it. Yeah. We went down and we played uh, played in Dublin uh, against the Republic, and that was it was something different. It was a wee taste. There wasn't an under twenty one league at that time, so I think it was just formed just to give players of that age a chance for the scouts in the big clubs to see. Uh, so it was a good idea. There you are. Were you aware? Was the scouts there? Uh, I wasn't aware. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Uh, well then, Tom, shortly after that there, uh, as far as that there, it was concerned, you were talking about scouts there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> to my knowledge, obviously, uh, we're all aware that uh, you had uh, went across the water. Uh, yeah. First of all, you didn't go to Manchester United. No. Where did you go first then, or what were you? My first trial. Well, I haven't heard that there was rumours that, that even an American side was in for you. Chicago well, Stings, who were playing in the old North American Soccer League. You remember the old ball in a con. I do indeed, I do indeed, certainly. Right. And I would have covered the football a lot, a lot of the, the, the times. Uh, an observer. Colin the old observer, I certainly, of course. And every week, it was, it was QPR, it was Chicago Stings. I actually held that down there. Aye. Uh, there was Glasgow Celtic. So I always like Glasgow Celtic, I said, I'm for you, man. Glasgow Celtic, I'm looking for you. Oh, I'm going to bust the heart on. I'm just picture you coming out of Harlem, I'm looking for Glasgow Celtic. Slow the scores, hat trick at Ibrox, you know. The last trip back in. Can you imagine that? I certainly, of course, of course. Yeah. Then did, where did you go to first, Tom? Uh, at that time, I played the ball and we played a few matches in the wee pitch where the big pitch was getting down. That's right, right. the new stand when it was getting built. And when, when the new stand was getting built and was reopened, the uh, Danny Blanchard was invited <coughs> to come and reopen it. Danny Blanchard. Fantastic. Oh, legend. Ex-Spurs legend. Ex-Spurs. Ex-Lord So obviously Danny must have seen me and he, with him playing with Spurs, he told Spurs it me. So they invited me to London for a week's trial. So we over there for a week's trial, come back. Then they invited me to uh, Norway and Sweden with the first team. So I travelled over. Bill Nicholson met me at the airport. Could the great Bill Nicholson, a double winner in 1961? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Nicholson to Spurs. Spurs supporters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when Bill. Bill picked me up and I stayed at the hotel and the next day they uh, met the team at uh, Heathrow. 
and we travelled to Northern Sweden. I played with Glenn Hoddle, John Platt, John Duncan, all uh, all of them players. And as a, when we came back, Keith Burkenshaw says to me that uh, he was uh, his young players on the book was just as good as me, so he wasn't going to sign me. So I came back. Then two weeks, I had met uh, Tommy Cavanagh. At oh, the, Cavanagh, at certainly. At the yeah. Bowhill and Coleraine and arranged for a month's trial at Old Trafford. And within two weeks of that trial, uh, Manchester United sent him on a two-year contract. Unreal talk. So from coming back on a downer uh, to... And even back... I think, uh, when was that? 1979? 78? Uh-huh. Tommy, and then, and then you couldn't really go under a banner than Manchester United, no. you know what I mean? Well, you know, he had Liverpool, they were winning everything. But, they were but Manchester United was the biggest Manchester United, I've always been Manchester United, yeah, so I'm just saying that I should club you know. Yeah. And I think there's no doubt about it, for any man, to, or for anybody in any walk of life, mm-hmm. to have come from humble backgrounds like your own, obviously, and a small place like Paladin, you know, namely where I was well, of course, uh, and to be getting them opportunities and then to, to jump on top of them and then to eventually get signed by mm-hmm. Manchester United as a full time professional yeah. and to go training and you know to go out and eat and to go out and even sort of attend a, a, a couple of th- a, a pints of beer at a local mm-hmm. hotel or whatever you know yeah. and to be mingling in that type of what did that feel like to him? What was it like? You know what? Starstruck. 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 Uh, you're from a wee town of Bonham, you know. The first I'd been was out of a holiday or something, you know, uh, you watch the football, as <coughs> you did every Saturday night, match today, you watch the football. Next thing you're seeing the TV, and next thing you're, you're working with it. That's just, you just can't believe it. Bobby we'll Turton, World Cup winner, coming down and, uh-huh. and training in the afternoon when you were in, having a wee kick about me, and you're not about that. Am I dreaming? Uh, I understand that. Right? So. Uh, I suppose really the other days, like, uh, you know, you had Joe Jordan. Yep. You had uh, Gordon McQueen, yep. who had all been there and done it and played at World Cup. Yeah, played at Leeds. Yeah, played at Leeds as well. That's yeah. right, Pete. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was obviously, ah, there was Guy yes. Bailey, yeah. right, a goalkeeper. You know, Alex Stepney was just finished. Alex Stepney was just finished. Right. Right. It was an old... Uh, Sammy McElroy. Sammy McElroy. Or, 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 Arthur Olbis, and he always held him very high esteem mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of myself what it would be like. You know, obviously I love playing football myself, you know, and obviously these dreams and this and dreams and that, you know, as we all except that football's about football's about dreams. Yeah. There's no point in saying it was a dream come true, quite obviously the dream come true, you know. What was it? You trained at the old cliff ground then? Yeah. And you out you're saying and you, you, you know, you're in the change rooms and the smell of the rub and all these things that happen in the atmosphere of a change room. Mm-hmm. You know, you're we, thinking we of the players that played there before and trained before. Are you starting to watch George Paul Best. except George Best, Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law, all the ladies. Are, mm-hmm. are you are you standing the right Tom when you're almost you know like as you're saying the word star stuff mm-hmm. quite obviously, but then you have to knock it down into business from you know what I mean? And you have to apply yourself. Then then it becomes like a job, uh, and then that there wears away. That star stuff is wears away. You might travel and see a player that maybe Trevor Francis, uh, and then you think there's Trevor Francis, you know. But you get used to the t- your own oh, players, right? right? There's no bigger than what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So fantastic, right? So you lose that, and then you, then you're not going down. Uh, and you, you just try just to try and get yourself. Well, you try and get yourself as fit as possible, and, and and you're getting used to the surroundings outside as well. And like I'm coming from Bottom I mean, to Manchester. No, I certainly. Oh, sh- you know, know, from, from a massive city, oh, yeah. from a wee town. That, that takes some adjustment. Oh, I certainly don't mind what I would. I moved down with a, a, a Manchester family stayed in Dykes, and, and they were good for me, so. Yeah. Good people, I said, Yeah, they were good people. I said, I'm going to cut them. So. Tremendous. Yeah. And I wouldn't care for it, you know what I mean, and boots and all, you know, and boots well, and all. I, I didn't have to come up to a premiership. Uh, oh, I certainly had to clean boots. I just went well, in as a professional. And you were getting all that done for you? I was getting all that done. And you were doing the way. Yeah, you were getting all that done. Your kit was laying out. I could only ever pitch it, Tom. I could only ever pitch it at all. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, what was what you say there? Uh, and then the first day that you ran on the pitch as a Manchester United player, what was it like? What you know, Tom, the debut? Or your debut, yes, obviously. Yeah, because because you learn your trade in the reserves in the centre league. Now you play in all the big stadiums. You're going to like, so that's how you learn your career. Uh-huh. Then when you get a chance to make the debut, you're running out in front of 42,000, which wasn't like a passing. No. But it still looks full. And the atmosphere is electric. I totally and mind. it's nerve-wracking. It's trying to control your nerves. Uh, it really is. It's all about controlling your nerves. And 
You know, some people can do it and some people can't, but you have to admire for Christ. Oh, God, there's no uh, uh, you know, The longer you do it, the more you make it. Yes, there's an angel. There's an angel. There's an angel. When you're doing it for the first time, it's, 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 it's scary. It really is. I can imagine so. Uh, it's a whole lot. It's, it's nervous excitement as well. Did you sleep the night before it? <laughs> I slept, but I was writing a few things. Oh, right. Would you have knew you then, obviously, on the Friday or the Thursday? I knew you on the Friday. Of course, on, on a Friday. We Which may not help things much. Oh, well, it's nice to have a wee bit of a uh, there. Sure. Or, some boys maybe not to the last minute, they know. Uh, you have time to get work. But uh, we trained at Old Trafford on a Friday, and we'd done about half an hour, and then we had a half an hour on the side. So I was working around the pitch, walking and talking, having a wee chat. He called me over and says, I'm going to give you a debut in the morning. So I says, OK. He says, how do you do that? I says, I feel OK. Well, he went. I was just inside. I was just bubbling. Couldn't leave at home. Ring home and tell him mum and dad. Yeah, there people don't watch yeah. it. Make sure to watch my today. Aye. Huh? Mm-hmm. Aye. I can only imagine, Tom, how you did feel, you know, having known you there, you yeah. know, uh, and known you this lifetime, obviously, I can only imagine how you felt, like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, uh, and obviously, you know, like, I'm sure it was a dream come true to you, how you know, and, and then out of that, Tom, out, 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 okay, the first team at Manchester, you know, there, there, a couple of international caps, there was three, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. well, it was, must have been good representing your companies, but I've been well up there, too, you know, like, what was the company you get to? It's that's not Dennis Law, I read it on, it says he was most proud of the following of Scotland, he's played for Torino, Teams. Uh, he, 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 felt, yeah, he felt his company. Ah, that's a fair play. You know, I was just an hour stay that was coming to me, just flying at me. It was, uh, it was an international thing. You know, I was coming from Saturday morning league in the space of two to three years to international football. That's, that's, you couldn't get any. No, 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 it doesn't work. You know, in your dreams, maybe you could uh, do this. Uh, you know, well, Tom, that's why I'm here. I'm here to share that that moments, the moments with you, like, you know. Mm-hmm. What I mean? And I'm obviously here on behalf of all the people out there. You know, and I'm sure you know that we have legends here, we have legends there. You know what I mean? And I'm bothered. I mean, there really only is one man who's ever played uh, for Manchester United. You know, and there's many a man who's been over. You know, and, uh, played his trade at the reserves or the thirds or what we would call the youth system. There, you know, never actually materialised to the top class team, the first class team, uh, the first team. You know, and this man did. You know. And, I think I think it's I think it's great Tom to to chat with you and as I say to all the people out there it's just it's, it's brilliant to be listening to these stories you know what I mean we've had a chat before we used to put the camera on and you know as it's, it's tremendously fascinating Tom and I, I know you're tremendously proud of all that you know it's something that nobody can ever, ever take away from you you know now I'm just talking here you then come back then Tom uh, you went to Chester then after Manchester yeah. United yeah. and then you'd come back into the Irish League for five or six years was it? Uh, ninety one, eighty three, ninety one, so eight years. Three years. And then, since that there, obviously, Tom, you at Mountie, you won the league a couple of years, wasn't Yeah, it? I won the league. Did you say you got played a year? Oh, that was just a support club. Oh, right. Two players right, right. well, last year, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think, Tom, anything can ever replace the buzz that you got of being at Manchester United. You know what I mean? You know, it's all down, 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 As Tommy Doherty said, after he left, I think, was it 1978 or 77, was it? He says the yeah. only place you go after you play for Man United and after you're finished at Man United, yeah. it's downhill. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean as a player, but you know, you go on down the town looking for something else. You know, what I mean? because I think the panic, I, I think the panic of soccer, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't take away from the talent that you played elsewhere. But I think yeah. the panic of, of anybody's soccer career who played at Manchester United, yeah. I wouldn't matter if they played for somebody else. Manchester United was the mountain that you had to climb. You know, yeah. and uh, obviously then you went back to the Hummers after your Irish League uh, well, terms in. Well, you talk about my neck and downhill. Once you play for Lampy and Irish League, and you move, uh, you're downhill. I was supposed to do the They're the man you made up. They're the man you made up the Irish League. So then I moved to Parrot from, uh, from Lampy. Then I got a chance to play with Bar John Corian under Jim Platt. Uh, Jim so I headed to Corian uh, and then went to Larne and retired from Larne in 1991. So mm-hmm. I got reinstated as an amateur. Oh, that's right. I mean, you had to yeah, do a five-year yeah. period, was it, Tom? Well, I think it was only a, a couple of years because I was friendly with David Bowen. Oh, right. So you knew something today, yeah? Of course. We caught, caught. <laughs> so uh, that was okay. Uh, David got me reinstated. I uh, went and picked the home and uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know. I really watched it. We were never in contention. No. And there's one thing, Sherman, and this is your old club, Kranny. 
I was never on the women's side against Canada. No, I meant that against you, Tom. I meant that a couple of times. And beat race for you, Tom. Tom I have always said, we've never beat Canada. We have just chatted it there for the last good 20 months, sir. I've just chatted it there just like no time. But we've just chatted it there about the highs. You know, that's as high as what it gets in Balmina and yes. the Sargon League. You know. yes. I can still remember it this day, playing for Canada and scoring goals against the Homers, against mm-hmm. many of another team. Mm-hmm. But obviously, the banter between the Homers and Canada in them days was unreal. It was yeah. There was a respect. Oh, it was mutual yeah. respect. It was mutual respect. But hey, yeah. you fought your corner. Yeah. You oh, fought your God. corner. Of course. Tom, honestly, goodness. There's many a night when the bottles and threw you in the, you know, when I say about talking about the water bottles and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and the atmosphere just at that level was electric. You know, it was fantastic. And the change rooms, you know, it was right. Shut the door. Don't let anybody hear what we're talking about. Yes. You know, I always remember my boy was Jeff Blair. Jeff Blair to me was, you know, Jeff Jeff brought me into the world as far as the hard nuts of football is concerned. You know, okay. Okay. he also broke me as well. You know, he, he, he hit me too hard, and he made me realise that you know I didn't have what it took to get through with it. Well, I did have what it took to get through with it, but I didn't do anything about it. You know, as we were talking earlier on, you know, it's got going on and through with it. Like you know? And Jeff Blair was the boy for me. It was the hard nut. You know what I mean? And obviously, I'll be getting into you with Jeff. Yeah. And the times have gone past here, but uh, and then whenever you finish playing football, then Tom, did you go and watch football? Did you? I took up the golf show. Oh right, yeah, right. I just I'm still a member of Stroop and Grace Hall. Right, right. So I took up the golf and that's a great game. Oh, I really a, lot, a lot of ex footballers play golf. Oh, you know, you enjoy it. Oh, I was dancing, oh, plays oh, all the time. Oh, certainly, all right. They're all playing golf. So I, I play that for like 15 years. You love it, Tom? Aren't you? I, I love it. Right, yeah, but there. But I don't know what it is. After a certain period, I said you just. Oh, I love them, I remember, oh. when it comes to then you took up the notes. You've played a bit of guitar, didn't you? Tom, you like the music. You've recorded quite a few tunes there. I've been to listen to yes. them. And quite good they are, you know. Yeah. Uh, ah, that's uh, another love I have. Oh, right. yeah. And it's, um, I've got a sample of you today, shall we? There you are now, obviously. I'm going to put it in. Right, Sam was friendly here. Yes, no doubt. I'm very. You're some pal. Ah, thanks for your time. Who are you into your time? Tom, listen, I'll tell you this here. I don't think I've had much time you have whenever you played football because I remember you in your later stages playing for Raymond Homers whenever you were probably over 40 years of age and you were at Lightning. So I can only imagine what you were like. And you were turning boys at 21 years of age who were standard footballers, good standard footballers. You were making them up stupid footballers. And this is when you totally finished and weren't even dedicating yourself to it. You know? So I can only imagine what it would have been like to play with you or alongside you. Now there are two questions I'm going to ask you here just before we leave here. I'm going to ask you who was the best player that you ever played alongside? George Best. George Best. I had the privilege to play in a test of mile with him. Peter Dorans. Peter Dorans. Peter And George Best came along and his agent, McCoy. That's right. He, he actually did a finish. But George was <coughs> out that night and he was stroking the ball about and he started with the skills and I thought, what was it not like? Ah, uh, I speak. I've heard many a story, I've heard many a story. I used to talk to Harry Gregg one day, and Harry Gregg really yes. did. And then he really fell out with it. Yes. Because he says, well, I couldn't answer the question. Mm-hmm. Apparently it was just, it was like the Beatles. Yes. Or like Elvis Presley and Arnold. Like it was just totally different than anything yeah. I've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And who, who then, uh, I'll say who's the best player you played alongside, who's the best player you ever played against? Mm. Yeah, that's lost, yeah. Alan Ball. Alan Ball played against Southampton. Played against Southampton. Now Alan Ball was at Ennis Bear. Oh, I wasn't. But he, he he just ran the game. And there's not too many boys that are around the game. No. He ran. The game. See, I think we can do the end down review here, Tom. By saying you can not this, you can not that. Come down experience. Mm-hmm. You come down experience. You know. Yeah. Memories, sure. Memories. Yeah. That's something we're always going to talk about. And. I would just like to say here, from behalf of myself of BSN TV and Sherman sure, Marino, as you all know me, I'm uh, putting a bit of input into local sport here at the moment. This has been an absolute tremendous sense for me to get someone who's uh, once a foreigner football career and obviously to be made welcome in the house and to drink the finest tea, which there is in Bali, of course. Uh, but not only that, to be made welcome to listen to some of the memories as we're talking about here and some of the stories obviously you're telling me about, Tom. I just want to say this, and it's been an absolute pleasure. And I just want to say thanks very much for all your help. Uh, BSN TV is here in Balmain to offer as much information to people who don't know as much about people like Tom and all the other people who, in their time, whenever they're there, reached the top and done something about it. You know? So, Tom, I just want to say thanks very much. Uh, I want to wish you all the very best with uh, whatever you do in your life, your guitar, with your golfing. And if you even want to make a comeback, Tom, give me a shout and I'll polish your boots for you. And you can throw me a pound, sir. <laughs> well, the scrum plug I will do what I do. No problem, sir. Okay. That's been my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave you here for a minute just to uh, look at a man who played for uh, Manchester United for two seasons. Uh, his name is Tom Sloan from Bible, and everybody in Bible was very, very proud of him at the time. Tom, all the best from Sherman. Thank you. Sherman. Thank you. Thank you.